The White House is planning fresh sanctions against Russia following the death of opposition leader Alexei Navalny last week. And the Education Department is forgiving another $1 billion in student loan debt. Good morning. I'm Korva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. Following the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, the White House is telegraphing what it's calling a major package of sanctions against Russia. As NPR's Giles Snyder reports, these are expected to be announced later this week. Before leaving Washington for a campaign swing through California, President Biden told reporters that he will not discuss details about the new sanctions until after they are unveiled. We'll have a major package announced on Friday. White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby says the sanctions will be aimed at holding Russia accountable for Navalny's death. And quite frankly, for all its actions over the course of this vicious and brutal war that has now raised on for two years. The sanctions come on top of the wide-ranging actions the Biden administration imposed after Russia invaded Ukraine. The new measures against Russia will be announced on the eve of the two-year anniversary of the war. Trial Snyder, NPR News. The Biden administration says it plans to forgive more than $1 billion in federal student loan debt. As NPR's Hiba Ahmed reports, the Education Department says the move will affect more than 150,000 borrowers who qualify. A borrower must be enrolled in the federal government's Saving on a Valuable Education or SAVE plan, been in repayment for at least 10 years, and have initially borrowed $12,000 or less in federal student loans. In an interview with NPR, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona said this round of relief targets low-income borrowers. I believe the benefits of our borrowers who are falling into default, being able to get back on their feet and contribute to the economy will help our country move forward. And without question, this is also contributing to the growth of communities. Eligible borrowers will begin to be notified today. Hiba Ahmed, NPR News. A federal magistrate judge has ordered the release of an FBI informant. Prosecutors say Alexander Smirnov has lied about an alleged scheme involving President Biden and his son Hunter. They allege he lied to the FBI. They also claim Smirnov has extensive ties to Russian intelligence. And prosecutors say that Smirnov says people tied to Russian intelligence were involved in passing along a story about Hunter Biden. The Alabama Supreme Court has ruled that frozen embryos can be considered children under state law. The decision comes from a case involving the IVF process where people can freeze embryos until choosing to implant them. Mary Ziegler is a law professor at the University of California, Davis. She says the ruling is bound to deeply affect people who want to use this method for pregnancy. Well, if embryos are persons under this ruling, that could have pretty profound downstream complications for how IVF is performed. So in IVF, generally more embryos are created than are implanted. They're stored. Sometimes they're donated or destroyed, depending on the wishes of the people pursuing IVF. Two Kansas City men are facing murder charges in the shooting that took place during the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl celebration. From member station KCUR, Peggy Lowe reports... The shooting killed one person and wounded at least 22 others. Jackson County Prosecutor Gene Peters Baker announced homicide charges against two adult men in the shooting during the Chiefs' championship rally. Lindell Mays of Raytown and Dominic Miller of Kansas City are both charged with second-degree murder and three other charges in the death of Lisa Lopez-Galvin. Baker promised more arrests. We seek to hold every shooter accountable for their actions on that day. Every single one. Both men are still hospitalized with wounds received during the shooting. Maker says the men didn't seem to know each other but had a verbal argument and quickly pulled guns. She says Miller is allegedly the one who fired the shot that killed Lopez Galvin. For NPR News, I'm Peggy Lowe in Kansas City. This is NPR.